but today is the great rehearsal. This festival is an annual rehearsal, believe it or not, for the day when we will hear the trumpet of God. When Yeshua will return, Jesus, and we will join the resurrected righteous dead as we crown him the king. This is a rehearsal for a coronation. It's a holiday that was created by Adonai, by the Lord himself. It is not man's holiday. It is a holiday that Yeshua himself celebrated. It is a holiday that the first believers celebrated faithfully. It is a holiday that foreshadows the return of Yeshua. And it is a holiday or holy day that the entire world will celebrate during the thousand year reign of Yeshua on earth. So it makes sense to me that we get used to celebrating it now so we don't have to learn how to celebrate it then. Sadly, too many of us, as we talked about, don't know the first thing about this amazing festival. No fault of anybody. We walked in the light that we had. And now the Lord is shining new light on the path for us. And so we need to learn about it. The truth is that Adonai has always had all of his important events foreshadowed by his festivals. Always. Every biblical feast, every biblical festival lays out the plan of God. He has always lined everything up with those events. We were talking about Passover. The event of Passover, the circle, as we talked about before last week, is what we call the the circle of sanctification. It is the gospel. Passover was the day he was crucified. First fruits is the day he was resurrected. The feast of unleavened bread, it reminds us that he, without sin, went for us to the cross. And then, of course, Shavuot, what we know as Pentecost, was the day that the Holy Spirit was poured out on his people. Moving ahead to the fall feast, where we are now, we see the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to say, on the way to us, and so we rehearse this day. The first four festivals were fulfilled not only to the day, but also to the hour, an important issue. Why would we think that the last three, Day of Trumpets, Day of Atonement, and Sukkot, would be any different? He will fulfill those also to the last hour on the exact day. The blowing of trumpets is a sign of the return of Messiah, and it's a memorial of Adonai's grace to Abraham when he substituted a ram to replace Isaac. The story of Isaac and Abraham is the story of the gospel, because Isaac was bound to the sacrificial stones, but God in his grace sent a lamb To take Isaac's place. We represent Isaac in the world. And God sent a lamb to keep us off the sacrificial stone. And today we actually celebrate the return of that lamb as the lion who will receive his crown. We know that Isaac was a type and shadow of Yeshua himself. Hebrews 11, 17 through 19 says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, he offered up Isaac, and he that received the promise offered up his only begotten son, and of whom it was said, it was said of Abraham, that in Isaac your seed will be called and blessed. And he accounted that that Adonai was able to raise Isaac up, even from the dead. And he received him this way in a vision. Both Isaac and And Jesus' birth were miracles. Both of them were obedient to the point of sacrifice. The Feast of Trumpets can be and should be a very special time for us as disciples of the one true God. Our sins are not forgiven just when we believe. Did you know that? James 2.19 says, you believe that there is one God. Well, you do well. The demons also believe And they tremble, Cameron, because they know. 
to be forgiven, we must have a repentant heart. In Hebrew, that's called teshuva, to turn away from whatever we had done before. We must come in submission to our Heavenly Father, asking for forgiveness, knowing that He will forgive us just like a father forgives the father's child. That forgiveness which we seek has been guaranteed, bought and paid for by the precious blood of the king himself. And so as we enter this joyous time, let us also enter in with a heart of repentance, because that's the other side of the coin of joy from this day. Think of this as a special invitation by the king of the universe to get things right in our lives as we look forward to the rest of the fall feast. And now we'll have the grace after the meal. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who nourishes the entire world in his goodness, with kindness, with grace, and with mercy. He gives nourishment to all flesh, for his grace is eternal. And through his great goodness, nourishment was never lacking to us, and may it never be lacking to us forever for the sake of his great name, because he is the God who nourishes and sustains all and benefits all. And he prepares food for all of his creatures, which he has created. Blessed are you, O Lord, who nourishes us all. The compassionate one, may you bless everyone in this room who has shared the table with us from which we have eaten just as the forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, were blessed in everything, from everything, with everything, so may you bless all of us together with your perfect blessing, and let us say, Amen. And now we'll do the Kiddush. And tonight we'll stay, we'll stay a special Kiddush blessing over the cup. We normally do the one little blessing that we do over the cup but tonight we're going to do an extra blessing because of the specialness of this day. I think there's still few enough of us that we can approach the table. If y'all want to, you can come up and we'll do the Kiddush together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Bore Pri Hagafen. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all people and exalted us above every tongue, and sanctified us in your commandments, by your grace, through Yeshua, and gave to us with love this day of remembrance, Yom Teruah, a holy gathering, a reminder of our exodus from our personal Egypt. For you chose us, and you sanctified us from all the people, by your grace, through faith, and your word is true and established forever. Blessed are you, Adonai, King over all the land, sanctifier of the whole house of Israel and sanctifier of this day of remembrance, the day of trumpets. And let us say, Amen. Amen. And so the blessing over the bread. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam ha'motzi lechem min ha'aretz. Blessed are you, Yahweh our God, King of the universe who brings forth bread from the earth and forgiving us Yeshua, our Messiah, who said, I am the bread of life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Shema Israel Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Malchuto Le'olam Vayed Yeshua HaMashiach Ata Adonai Hero Israel, Yahweh's our God, Yahweh's one. Blessed is the name of His glorious kingdom forever and ever. Yeshua, Yeshua Messiah, Messiah, you are Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Adonai, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praises. I will give you thanks in the great congregation. 
I will praise you among a mighty throng, according to Psalms. Romans says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And then in Ephesians, Paul said, Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love, just as Messiah also loved you and gave himself up for you as an offering, a sacrifice to God as a fragrant aroma. And finally in Hebrews we read, Through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips that give thanks to his name. Amen. So if you will read with me Psalm 150, we will read in unison. And it starts off with a word that you can't read like I'm talking to you right now. It starts off with a word that demands a shout. Thank you. So as we read together, when we get to those two words, please. We just heard the song. He's worthy of it all. He's worthy of our praise. When no one else is, he always is. So Psalm 150, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty expanse. Praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for his enormous greatness. Praise him with the blast of the shofar. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flute. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise Adonai. Hallelujah! Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehekiyanu Bikiyamanu Behigiyanu Lezman Hazay. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has granted us life and sustained us and brought us to this season. A blessing over the Torah, Baruch Atah Adonai Hamvarach. Some of y'all may remember. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Vaed. Blessed is Adonai, the Blessed One forever and ever. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Noten Lanu at Torah Emet. Vikhaye Alom Noten Butenu Bamishikenu Yeshua Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Omein. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who has given us the Torah of truth and planted eternal life within us through Yeshua, our Messiah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Amen. And so I'm going to ask if somebody will read Leviticus 23, 1 and 2. They're in your program. Steve? Convocations. Convocation. They are my appointed peace. And someone will read the next one. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, say, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest. And the Lord will proclaim the last of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall not do the ordinary work. And then Numbers 29? Anybody? On the first day of the seventh month, you shall have a holy convocation. You shall not do any ordinary work. It is a day to blow the trumpets. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, King of the universe, who, in giving us Yeshua, the living Torah, has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Yom Teruah, or the Day of Trumpets, is the only day in the whole year, the whole biblical year, that is referred to as the hidden day, or the day that no man knows. That may sound familiar. This is because Yom Teruah can only begin on a new moon, as we've studied before. The Hebrew months begin with the new moon, the cycle between 28 and 30 days. That may sound familiar to some of you ladies and some of us married men. 
It's because God designed it that way. The solar calendar is man's doing. The lunar calendar is God's doing. Everything, everything, including the tides, is controlled by the lunar cycle. So since Yom Teruah can only begin on a new moon, each year nobody knows exactly the day or the hour. Diane, do you remember why we could say nobody remembers the day or the hour? Remember what we talked about, about what was required in order to, to pronounce the beginning of the new month? Remember, we had to have two witnesses. So Michael and I would have to stand out on the Mount of Olives and wait for the new moon to show up. And only when we had seen it and had told Steve that the new moon had been sighted does the new month start. Until then, the new month has not started. And this is the only day that can only be celebrated once, again, using us, once Michael and I have told Steve that the new month has started and Steve makes the proclamation, we are in the month of Tishri. Until that point, nobody knows the day is here. So it is a hidden day. The Hebrew seventh month of Tishri is the biblical calendar. It will be a day of rest, a day reminding us of our resurrection to come, of our redemption that's now, and it's a reminder of the time to blow the shofar. This day must be a holy convocation, meaning a holy rehearsal, which is what we're doing right now. We're waiting. If you all hear the trumpet before I do, tell me, will you? That's right, you want to tell me, I'll know, because the walls will start shaking and the ground will start trembling. I think we'll know. <laughs> It is a fact that no one can know the exact day or hour of the final trumpet sound. And the reason being that no one knows the exact day or hour of the new moon sighting, which will be signal the beginning of the festival. Remember what we said, all of God's appointed times either are prophetic in nature or prophetic in fulfillment. They've either been fulfilled or they will be fulfilled. We, as fallible mankind in our efforts to be religiously pleasing to everybody have tried to piece together what Yeshua was saying when he came up and told the disciples nobody knew the day or the hour of his return because we have forgotten the roots of our faith. And so as a result, we tried to plug in things because, as Carol's pointed out, if you start a book two-thirds of the way through, and you don't know what happened before, then as you're reading, you've got to make up stuff in order to fill in the gaps when you're reading the rest of the book. And that's what we have done to try to explain the fact that nobody would know the day or the hour. So we begin this day with the sounding of the shofar. The silver trumpet was first. We'll sound the shofar later. This is the day of his return. Now, wait a minute. I'm not setting calendar dates. I'm just telling you, and we'll see it later on in a, in a verse. We as his people should not be surprised. We're supposed to know the seasons because he gave us the moon for, Michael, we studied this. He gave us the moon for signs and for seasons. And that word seasons means what? Moed, appointed times. This is an appointed time. When Yeshua said, that day or hour no man knows, it was a common Hebrew idiom of the time. It's actually a common Hebrew idiom today. If you ask a rabbi today, let's say this biblical month has not started yet. And you went up to your rabbi, we know a rabbi, and you went up to that rabbi and you said, when does the month of Tishri start? Their response very well might be, nobody knows. Because it's got to be sighted. The new moon's got to be seen. We talked about how we can pinpoint the new moon according to Noah, so we know mathematically when the new moon's going to start. And that's okay. You all already know we cheat, we use the calendar, so we know when to had the celebrations, but biblically, the order that God put in place was that it had to be seen, it had to be witnessed. 
And that will be the cycle that we'll work on as we look forward to his return. It'll have to be cited. The moon crescent, sometimes people call it the thumbnail. So there's the new moon that's invisible, and we're not talking about that. It's only when that first crescent appears that we know that the moon has moved into the next month. In other words, that, that thumbnail means we've, we've pierced the next month. We are into the new month. Since Yom Teruah starts on the first day of Tishri, or the first of the month, and it's, by the way, is the only biblical feast that starts on the first day of the month, only when the moon crescent appears can the feast of Yom Teruah begin, as we just said. This means that we, we, as followers of King Yeshua, need to amend our ways to fit his ways. Not the other way around. I believe, personally, that the sounding of that final trumpet is very near with what we see going on today. With our observance tonight, what we're doing now, we begin what are known as the ten days of awe, which lead up to the Day of Atonement. In Hebrew, they're called the Noraim, or the Yamim Noraim, which means days of awe. Beginning today, it is a time of repentance. For the next 10 days, as we look toward the Day of Atonement, it's time for us to do the Hebrew word teshuva, which means to turn from those things that we may have dealt with in the past. This is that one time during the year when God himself invites us, he personally invites us to repent and get our accounts straight with each other and with him. See, I can't have my account straight with him if I'm not straight with you, Brett. If I'm holding strife in my heart at you, what did Messiah say? If I don't forgive you, he can't forgive me. He won't forgive me because his word is out there. So you and I have to be free of strife. Me and Diane have to be free of strife. I've got to make sure I'm walking in complete harmony with my sister Pam and with my brother Cameron. That's the first step. That's just the first step. And for us as humans, that's the hardest step. Because, Steve, I don't want you to know I've got issues. You were a little cranky at breakfast. I, <laughs> see, it's important that you understand I don't have any issues. I don't want to make my issues public. And yet, because Yeshua says that we are joined together by that which every joint supplies, we need each other. I, I need you in my life. As bad as it sounds, you need me in your life too. Sorry. That's just the way it works out. She's, she's stuck with me. I mean, Y'all are stuck with me too because we're family. But that's the way he intended it. So this season is our call to get things right with him as we look toward the Day of Atonement. We need to make sure that our accounts with the king are clear and I'm going to get somebody to read Matthew 24, 31 to 42, if you will. He will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. And the big tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gate. Truly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning the day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. For as it were in the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came, swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be left in the field. One will be taken and one left. 
Two women will be grinding the mill. One will be taken and one left. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Someone read First Thessalonians 4, that next passage. Anybody. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the Lord's coming will not possibly precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be snatched away at the same time together with them in the clouds for a meeting with the Lord in the air. And thus we will be together with the Lord always. Therefore comfort one another with these words. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, we have no need of anything to be written to you. For you yourselves well know that the day of the Lord is coming in the same way. And now we come to our song of praise, which is a responsive reading. And I'll read the regular text, and I'll ask you to read the italics text, and Carol is going to be your leader for the responsive part. Kind of, I kind of sprung that on her. She didn't know that ahead of time. So Psalm 136, Praise Adonai, for he is good, for his loving kindness endures forever. Praise the Lord of hosts, for his loving kindness endures forever. Who made the heavens by wisdom, for his loving kindness endures forever. Who made great lights, for his loving kindness endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule by night, for his loving kindness endures forever. And let out Israel among them, for his loving kindness endures forever. Who cut the sea of reeds into parts, for his loving kindness endures forever. But he hurled Pharaoh and his armies into the sea of reeds, for his loving kindness endures forever. Who struck down great kings, for his loving kindness endures forever. Sihon, king of the Amorites, for his loving kindness endures forever. And he gave their land for an inheritance, for his loving kindness endures forever. He remembered us in our lowly estate, for his loving kindness endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh. For his loving kindness endures forever. Praise the God of heaven, for his loving kindness endures forever. Psalm 47, for the choir director, a psalm for the sons of Korah. Clap your hands, all people. Sound the shofar to God with the voice of joy. For the Lord, Yahweh, most high, is to be feared, a great king over all the earth. He subdues people under us and nations under our feet. He chooses our inheritance for us. The glory of Jacob whom he loves, Selah. God has ascended with a shout. Adonai with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our king. Sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with a skillful song. God reigns over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the people have assembled themselves as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. 
they that shall walk, O Lord, in the light of your countenance. Psalm 89, 15 specifically, you see there in the parentheses, that's the Hebrew, the sound is a Hebrew turua, which means to clamor, specifically like the alarm of a trumpet. And now we will move to hearing of the shofar. And the blessing over the shofar is, Baruch atah donai Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvitah v'tzivanu, lishmoa kol ha'shofar. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to hear the voice of the shofar. And so I'm going to get Carol to sound the different sounds of the shofar. We'll sound them one at a time so you can hear what they sound like. And then she's going to go back and sound them all at once. And when she gets to the point of the, you see there, the congregation will join in the final tekiah hagodal. Who needs their shofar? Because that's when we're going to shout hallelujah or we're going to sound our shofars. I got my little one up here. And Diane is one shofar sounder. Because this, the sound of the shofar is a time for celebration. It's a time for us to remember who our God is. So even if you don't have a pretend shofar, you can still say hallelujah when we get to that point. So the first sound is the tekiah, which is a long single blast, and it's meant to awaken those who are asleep. From Psalm 150, it means the king is coming. <laughs> And then the Shevarim, the broken cry, it's three short blasts which are crying out for relief from distress. And then the Teruah is a series of nine blasts. It's a sounding of the alarm. It's meant to call the congregation, us, to assemble for battle. And then finally the Tekiah Hagadol, that's the final blast that sounds like this. And so all of them together sound like this, and I'll give you the cue. Is that the key? Shivering. The Terua. And the Tekiah Hagadol. Hallelujah! Steve's got it. <laughs> Isn't it encouraging to see, if you ever think you're alone, and just think of all those people worshiping in that, in that arena. There are believers all over this country and all over the world, so never think that you're alone, because we aren't. And just like me and Diane were talking earlier, the spiritual realm is all around us. There are angels amongst us, and God's presence is always with us. He's promised to never leave us, nor forsake us, but we find they're ready for a healing. I mean, this life is short, y'all. It's like it's like this small. It's like a it's like a little dot in the expanse of time. I mean, we're going to be with God for eternity, and this is the short end of eternity. It's like boot camp training. So y'all stay strong, stay tough. Times are hard right now, but we're going to get through it because our King, He is really coming to set up His millennial kingdom on this earth. You have to believe that it's going to happen. Don't lose faith. Don't lose heart. If you ever, ever need encouragement, send us an email, get in the Word, and also shout and sing, because the enemy hates it. And the enemy hates it when you worship, so just sing, Hallelujah, Yeshua, I need you, I love you, Hallelujah, just whatever. And it'll just disperse the Because the Word of God says, promises, that He inhabits the praises of His, his people. people. He inhabits. And, and he inhabits the, the praises like of life. His people. Yes. Yes. Let me talk to those folks just a second. We've spent time talking about repentance and about Yeshua, our King. Listen, if you don't know that Galilean rabbi, 
you need to get to know him. And if you don't know who to talk to or who to contact, drop us a line. We'll walk you through it. It's not hard. It does require a commitment. It is work because the world does not want you to live according to the way God expects us to live. We're trying here, and we're going to help you try there also. So if you all will stand, we'll send you off with the priestly blessing. Yevarak ka Yahweh v'yishmarecha, Yeer Yahweh panavalecha v'ichunecha, Yisa Yahweh panavalecha v'yasem lecha, Shalom. Now may Yahweh bless you and keep you. May He make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. May He lift up His countenance upon you and give you His Peace. Yes. In the name of our Prince of Peace, Yeshua Messiah. Oh, man. Amen. And a new Hebrew phrase for you, instead of Shabbat Shalom, we would say Hag Sameach, which means joyful feast. So Hag Sameach to you.